Hey guys, this is Jeremy with Wyden Woodworks. Welcome back. This week I've got a quick update to the doggy daybed. The cushion and the carpet tiles finally came in so I could put the finishing touches on. We really love the bed and so do the dogs, but in the time that we've had it, we've noticed that the ramp slides around a little too easily. So to make it more secure and keep the ramp from moving, I'll also be adding stops to the bed and rubber feet to the ramp. And for aesthetics, I'll be gluing in rails along the side of the ramp. Let's keep this one short and jump right into the build. We decided to cover the ramp and give it some traction so that the dogs could get up easier. After picking through a couple different options, we landed on carpet, and because we didn't want to have to deal with a whole roll left over, we ended up deciding on carpet tiles. These are 18 inch square pieces of carpet, usually used in offices, and the ones we went with are self-adhesive but I wanted to be extra sure that they didn't come off the ramp, so I also applied them using construction adhesive. So once I had the nib cut, I used a sharp metal rod to pierce the tube to allow the adhesive to flow, and then put it in my caulk gun, and I applied the adhesive to the face of the ramp. And then I could align three of the carpet tiles on the ramp. I started at the top edge to make sure that the pieces went on square and worked my way down. With the tiles aligned on the ramp, I placed a scrap piece of plywood on top of the carpet so I could clamp it down. I had to fold the excess carpet over the edge of the ramp in order to be able to get the clamps on, and if I were to do this process again, I would get non-adhesive tiles, so when I folded them over, they didn't stick to the underside of the ramp. Then I used basically every F-style clamp I have to make sure I applied plenty of pressure all the way across the plywood. I set the ramp aside to let the construction adhesive dry, then came back a few hours later and removed the clamps. I also had to peel back the excess carpet tile from the underside of the ramp. I placed the ramp back on the scrap plywood, carpet side down, to use as a backing board while I cut off the excess carpet. I used the edge of the ramp as a cutting guide and cut away the carpet using a utility knife. I made sure to put a fresh blade in the knife to get as clean a cut as possible. With the bulk of the carpet tile removed, I could go in with the utility knife and a pair of scissors to clean up any loose fibers. I also put some 120 grit sandpaper in my sanding block to run along the edge of the plywood to smooth out the carpet tiles. To make the guardrails and the stop blocks, I first cut down three 48 inch strips of 3 quarter inch plywood to 2 inches, and then I cut one down to 3 inches to make the larger stop. Then I set the angle of the miter saw to 30 degrees to match the pitch of the ramp. I cut just the corners off for the two strips for the rails, making sure to turn the pieces over so that the cut angles were parallel with each other. I started outside the edge and slowly snuck up to the line. For the small stop block, I cut one corner off, then measured down two inches and made a 90 degree cross cut. The larger stop was a bit more difficult because the cut needed to be inset from the edge. So I drew out where I needed to cut on the plywood. Marking it out like this, make sure you don't cut off the wrong pieces. Then I measured two inches from the highest point and made a 90 degree cut. I accidentally double hit the record button on the camera, so I didn't get any footage of sanding down all the pieces. But I used my random orbit sander with 120 grit to smooth out all the faces and round over the edges. Wood glue doesn't adhere very well to pieces with finish on them, so I used 120 grit sandpaper in my sanding block to take off the finish on the bed catch and the ramp so that I could glue everything together. I ran a thick bead of Type On 2 along the bottom edge of the rails, then placed them on spacer blocks and clamped them to the ramp. I loosely set a clamp on one end, then placed the other side, and then clamped all along the edges. Once everything was clamped up, I came in with a wet rag and cleaned up any glue squeeze out. Then I put glue on the stop blocks anywhere that they would make contact with the bed. I clamped them in and cleaned up any excess glue with the rag, then let the glue set for a few hours before coming back to finish all the pieces. I finished the ramp and blocks with the same water-based polyurethane that I covered the rest of the bed with. I brushed it on with a paintbrush, being careful not to put any on the actual carpet, then put on three coats of finish, sanding with 220 grit sandpaper between each coat. I touched up everything with 400 grit paper to knock down any tackiness left from the final coat. The very last thing I did for the bed was to place anti-slip rubber feet on the legs of the ramp so that the whole thing doesn't slide on the tile floor. If it was sitting on carpet, I wouldn't bother with this, but the extra security on the tile doesn't hurt. They are self-adhesive, so I just placed the legs on top of the squares and pushed down. 
Then I use the utility knife to cut away the excess using the legs as a guide. And with that, the dog bed is finally done. We're still getting the dogs used to going up and down the ramp, but they love being able to see out the window and the bed underneath. We're all super happy with how it came out. I love the custom cushion, and I think we found the perfect pillow and blanket to put on top. I'll post links to the cushion, pillow, and blanket below. I hope you enjoyed the build. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos, and I'll see you all on the next one.